here again, you get the space pressure, that is of order one, and this is the pressure one of the volume. And here they are all, all of the same order. But in this case, the volume models is lighter than all of them, and that creates this cosmological problem. So this has to be very heavy. So they are of the same order, but very heavy. So what is it that we get? We get the ugly things I told you before. Space of symmetry and large scale. Large uh, scale <coughs> So essentially this is a really, it's something that not, people put it, we were just playing with that with that in the past, and now you can derive it. And those are the only scenarios you get. You don't get the nice scenario where everybody in this, the, all, this, all the soft terms are the same order, and all of them are small. Either they are split, or all of them very big. So, so the nice scenario that we all like it, doesn't come up here. Since I'm short of time, I will skip the inflation part. And if someone wants to tell me questions, I can, I can answer them. So your conclusion was you do not get the desired soft breaking terms? Or you do yes, we do not get the soft breaking terms that we desired, we wanted before. We get the ugly ones. We get the split supersymmetry or high risk supersymmetry. Okay. But those are the ones I thought now with exactly. that are exactly. that's, 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 the, okay. well, that's the message. Okay. So that, that then they are ugly compared to our wish, but they fit better with the experiment. I see. And so and since we derive them, now I don't see them that ugly in the sense that uh, it, it is a framework where everything is, is, is derived and you can complete. So. so let me just probably uh, conclude and then if you have questions. Uh, here. So as I told you, you have two scenarios. Out, out of those four, at the end, space of symmetry, high risk of symmetry, where the genus can be of a TV scale, but the scalar particles can be thousands or 50 times of that, or both of them to be very, very large, 10 to 11 GV. So in none of the cases, super simple to solve the character. So but what I wanted to emphasize is that so as I said before, this is concrete realization of a split supersymmetry in this case. In the framework, when you include the landscape, which is in the path, people just say, oh, let's assume the supersymmetry, you have a split supersymmetry, and there's something like a landscape to solve the, 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 the hierarchy problem. But they didn't have a landscape. Now we have a, a set of a class of models where you have the landscape that solves the hierarchy cosmological constant problem. This same landscape can affect the hierarchy problem and yet give you a split supersymmetry. So it's, it's a concrete realization of that. More, moreover, people were talking about space of symmetry, but they didn't know how split it was. It could have been uh, like a genus TV, and the scalars can be 10 to 11 or 10 to 14 GV. That was the original proposal, actually. Whereas here, we have almost what people call mini split. It's all about small differences, 50 or 100 uh, uh, factors. And, uh, and, uh, <coughs> That's precisely what the experiment is, is preparing. Because when people propose a split SUSI, they have not discovered the Higgs. Now you put the value of the Higgs mass here, and you can have a split supersymmetry. Uh, say that this, this is the mass of the scalars. This is the mass of the scalars, and this is the mass of the Higgs. Now the mass of the Higgs is here, and split supersymmetry goes between here and here, which is, uh, say, 10 uh, to the 2. 10 to, 10, to, sorry, 10 to the 4 GeV, which is the 10 TV, up to here, which is the 10, 10 to the 5 TV, 10 to the 3 TV. So these are the, 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 range, the range that is prepared by experiment. And that's, uh, that's precisely the range that we had. One, one smaller than one we take it. And then there's the same plot for, for large scale supersymmetry, and then for that, you, you, you can hit 10 to 11, 10 to the 12, which is the side of the event. So, in some sense, uh, this is a top down approach, but it's fitting with the preferred value from the square. By the way, what's the restriction on tangent beta nowadays? Uh, it's relatively small. That's a, I think it's a, to get all the scales, that's tangent beta. You can go from tangent beta 1 to up to 50, and the best one, speed is around 2. So, the experiment puts restriction? No, no, no. no? no, no. It's probably because you build all this and tells you, for instance, all this region is, is allowed. So the, this line here is when you have gauge copy unification. So to the, to the left is gauge copy unification. So you can have gauge copy unification here. 
So, and, and all this spelling can tell you that. But for our uh, scenario, you get you hit here. And then you can read and understand the But you can take it in 50 and also. The other uh, picture you get is something that touches the, the case, the paper we have with Pascal, is that uh, here you have a non standard cosmology after inflation. From inflation, you have the size of inflation. But after inflation, what happens? After inflation, we have this field, which is the volume, that oscillates around its minimum, so it dominates the energy density of the universe. So in a standard cosmology, people assume that after inflation, everything is thermalized after heating, and then you have everything else thermal. Here, and, and then you have radiation dominated. Here you have after inflation, is this field oscillating around its minimum that dominates the energy density. And that's, that evolves like matter, not like radiation. And, and so the real reheating happens when this field decays. And it happens to be very, very bad. And here we can heat the temperature can be a few of quantity years old. And uh, <coughs> so that's a real reheating. So I mean the, the history of the universe after inflation has changed. And then, for instance, the issues about dark matter are maybe you have to recalculate that how, how things do. And that's what, what we did with, with the Basque is that what people call the non-thermal dark matter. And, uh, and then there you can put constraints that uh, can be tested in future experiments for such of dark matter. So that's what is here. Still some constraints from the different searches. It allows the exceedance to be the lightest of the of the of the neutralinos, uh, still with the three and three hundred still allowed. And in the future, sort of the plot doesn't look like yeah. And in the future, it can be ruled out either by, by the new generation of other matter researchers, like something called LZ and the CPA, and even Frank, and they can look at the test. And, uh, and on colliders, I didn't say, for colliders, uh, since uh, the Gigino sort of it, all the PV and all the old ones will be very heavy. So at LSC, you will not see any of this. If you see it in a stop at the uh, LSC, you rule out all the scenarios. Because the squash will not be that light. But, uh, so the only thing we expect to see would be the like, Gigino's or uh, Wino's or something like that. Else. So it's very, very, it's very small hope to see something at LSC if this is correct. Uh, but it would be only the, 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 the lightest of this particle. And the, and the scalar component will not be seen. Okay, so let me conclude. Um, so there are two general scenarios for supersymmetry breaking with computable soft terms. And everything in terms of the fully supersymmetric effect of the theory because of this in the importance of the field picture. And uh, then the, we have, uh, well, because I'll, I'll decide on the trees, and I'll, just, uh, I'll be at that will give you. Uh, what is called space of the symmetry or mini space of the symmetry. And at the end, we have non-thermal dark matter as a, as a, as a, as a possible place where well. And uh, so this interesting and testable phenomenology. So that's, uh, and uh, as I emphasize that these are not just two random models, these are the, the state of the art, these are the only concrete models that people are, have everything uh, computed to fix the model. So, but, uh, of course, we cannot hope to rule out the string theory, but you can rule out complete uh, scenarios or general scenarios of this, the, of the scope of these two scenarios of the question. So, and unfortunately, I didn't have the time to say it about inflation and post-inflation, so you have to be persons of the year. Thank you.
there. So you, know, you don't find like that. So anytime we go to higher energy, you find something. So this scenario specifically motivated the 100 TV because this particle will be seen in the 100 TV colliders, but not a very simple sense. Uh, uh, of course, if we would have written this five years before, it would be more, more relevant to look at because now it's not posterior. But I think the scenario, you don't expect to see a lot of semi in any state of uh, And you say testable. I mean, testable, these yes. scenarios, you if nothing is discovered up to 15 TeV energy, which is where, how far do they take it? Okay, go? even the genus, the, the, because you know, the, 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 you just see that the. the uh, uh, what I told you in one of these plots, oops, oops, oh. this One sigma, this two sigma, you get the case for unification. So, so case unification is the only one that, the only sign that we have that looks, that is pointing at something interesting. Dark matter, maybe it's axions or something, so it doesn't have to be a So, case for So, in that sense, you have, this is the log of N1 half over M0. So, so it worked for N1 half over the TV, we can have everything to work. So, it can also work for, uh, 5 TV or something. Still, you get this from the I forgot the limits from here. I think in split source, you get the scope of identification. This is sensitive here, but it's the, all, of, all, all over this, you can get this from the identification. So imagine you have, you even have, uh, take this line and put it there. So you have here, uh, this, this is 10 to the 3 TV, this one will be 10 TV. Okay, I don't see the gauge coupling unification or right. the gauge coupling unification. You, know, you can see how flow is for symmetry, yeah. but the gene will be in the, uh, 5 TeV or so. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a cell, I've never seen it. I still have the gauge coupling unification, a relatively low energy. Right. Yeah. And uh, what you would see them at the 100 TeV. Look at that. Nice. This, this is an uh, argument for low scale. Uh, that's the other thing I didn't tell you before. In, in, the, in the original. Uh, well, yeah. In the original scenario, split SUSI was supposed to be around this size. And all of this was ruled out by, by the Higgs. And we are only left with a very small size. So everything is, in that sense, you can be optimistic. Say, it's pushing towards relatively small uh, split. And relatively small split means that it can be seen at 100 TV, even though it's not seen at the So in so that sense, it, it is encouraging. Because it could have been that the, all, all the things would have worked or all sort of the Higgs would have preferred higher scales, but the Higgs preferred that we have lower scales. So, depending on how much convincing you can be to, to use this kind of arguments for uh, for 100 TV, but I think the best argument to say was we have to explore the mix, the mix uh, scales and, and uh, the, the other sources that you put. But of course, it's easy for a theorist to say that. That's what I think. Um, now, I have to say that there are many other things going on, that the session for dark matter. That the is very exact. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, else there. Oh, 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 Oh, there. 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 South, South Korea is starting, but uh, then there's a, uh, uh, I the names, but uh, yeah, there are, uh, the, the thing that actually can cover a lot of uh, spectrum. And there are now this tabletop experiment being proposed also for actually it's plenty of, uh, it's cheap, and you can, there's this uh, nice, uh, very big range of uh, energy scale where they can be present. And in string theory, that's one of the things I say in one of the slides, that, uh, you know, one model that is always there is the overall volume. This, that's always there because of the bottom base volume. But in supersymmetry, this are it's a complex supersymmetry. So the overall volume has to have a partner to make it, and that's an axiom like partner. The mass of this axiom goes like 
uh, e to the minus, uh, minus goes like uh, e to the minus one volume to the two thirds. So you can see the volume is 10 to the 3. You can complete this and you get like 10 to the minus 23 electron volts. So you can have an action of precisely that, and that's actually a good candidate for back matter now that you've story. You know, an action particle of the 10 to the minus 23 electron volts. And that comes out here. Or, of course, it can be smaller than that because the, because of the coefficient. And if the volume is 10 to the 3, it's 10 to the 6, it will be quite small. But uh, this is, uh, these are, it's a very generic prediction that at least can be there. And people find ways to explore and look for those particles that will also make sense. So we cannot rely just in the, in the colliders to, to search for this. And of course, then on top of that, there is the whole uh, topology part and the search for, for, for tensor bonds and the inflation process. And uh, I had a slide where I had a, a 10 or 15 models of inflation transmissivity, and only one was consistent with the bicep claim. So if bicep would have been right, all the models of inflation from the would have been ruled out as a for one. And uh, so... That's not right. right. No. It was not right, but maybe they find it in the next five years and they would be all right. <laughs> so, but uh, they can, tell, can show you the... So uh, maybe that one will do it. No, we still divide the yes, yes, still, This is the action we're not about. And I, I think that they are pushing for it. And, uh, but it can be ruled out in the next few years. And actually, uh, my favorite one is something that if it is found now, it's ruled out. But if it's not found in 10 years, it's also ruled out. So it's something that it, it is predicted. So, so. And um, so in that sense, this, is, this kind of models are, 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 are uh, not as ambitious as to have a full test of speed theory, but uh, it's, it's physics in the sense that you can propose general class of models and you can prove them out experimentally. And some of them are accessible to um, and this picture about non-thermal history of the universe may have some other implications because it's, it's, uh, you know, one of the things that people say about inflation, inflation is very good somehow because uh, it dilutes everything that happens before. So then you don't have to know the details about what happened in the big bang and so because inflation is really good. But then it's also bad news because then you it is it hides you it hides you from ever testing that part of the, the, the fundamental theory because mm -hmm. that has been diluted by inflation. The good thing from a string model theory is that is, uh, there are these fields, like the moduli, that survive after inflation. And that they are a string that you can have. If so you after inflation, some topology <coughs> that is surviving at low energies that is not diluted by inflation and can be playing a role at, at, at late time cosmology. So in that sense, yeah, that can also be tested. So I don't know. There are several ways that you can go. Each, each of the things can be explained by a simpler model than string theory. So the question is only you have to have in the long term several things together that fits, that is all with that fits with the string theory. So you cannot be claiming that this will be tested in the next few years because I guess if they find split supersymmetry, there was all this split supersymmetry is not string theory. If they find uh, an action very light, it's always an action very light, it's not string theory. So they start finding several things at the same time, and then, then the string model will be the best way to. Can't hear you. Yeah. Could you please speak up? So this test scalar is over here. Right, then that's the How about Uino? Yes, they're like. Oh Gluin. So you can ask Uino, sorry. Yes, yes, Gluino, you said they're lighter, yes, just Gluinos uh Winos and and uh and uh its inos are lighter. Uh, luckily, the gluino is not usually the lightest. It will be against the uh, experiment, so in that sense, uh, uh, I mean, for dark matter, we, uh, the, the, the guinos and the hexinos are the preferred ones. And I think in our scenario, the hexinos are the ones that come out as the best candidate. So, gluinos will be possible there. And, and it's also good for a split because the gluinos can have a, this late decay that can eventually be tested 
providers. And that's, that's something that's, uh, that's a possibility also. Okay. Okay. Do you have a comment on this? Do you remind me what was wrong with D5s wrapped on two cycles? Sorry? Why would you have D7s and, and D3s? But uh, what was wrong with D5s wrapped yeah, on two cycles? Oh, very good. Maybe uh, there are two ones. You can have D3s and D7s or D5s and D9s. Are they equivalent? So when you have a D3 is separate, you can do it. Yes. So essentially you can, you can work with D3s and D7s on the same side of this one. Yes. Now, but in these ones, the D5s can play a role. They play a role because there will be non BBS. You have D3s and D7s because they have to be, uh, the difference in dimensionality has to be 4. They have to, have to be super symmetric. But once you have no super symmetric minimum, the D5s will be playing the role of the, of the domain walls that separate different minima. Because there will be domain wall in our dimensions and wrapping a free cycle in the actual dimensions. And so when you have this bubble nucleation from one minimum to another one, this bubble would be coming from a D5, which is kind of helpful. Uh, also, uh, do you, can you uh, give me a sort of intuitive picture why the, yeah, the volume of the Claudia is the same volume? So usually oh, just putting fluxes on cycles is not enough to It's not enough. No. So no, no, because so fluxes on cycles, it's not like the three cycles. And KKLT has some balance between some yeah. brains oh, and some no, no. brains or something like that. Uh, no, no, no. KKLT is a, uh, no, it's the balance between the number two of the effects and the fluxes. That's what they get the, the, the one I want to explain this. And uh, here is also the same. It's number two of the effects and number two of the So essentially, By non are you talking about the F3s wrapping around the, 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 the three form, the fluxes for the cycle maxes in the toe? No, that's the one that I was using. No, the toe, you have a descent of brain wrapping around four cycles. So in that descent of you have a gauge theory. And that gauge theory can confine, you can uh, run the gauge coupling, it can be a, a, like land QCD and get a, 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 a synthetic F3, you run. And then you have a number two of a lab. So that's um, what you have an instant. And this, well, in the, the simplest or more physical thing is the gene of condensation. Uh, so you have the condensation of your genus, that in just as a super potential e to the minus two pi over n g squared. That's, that's what long fit in field theory. So the only thing that the string theory adds, uh, adds to this is uh, oh, this one over g squared it happens yeah, to be the size of the cycle. And then, uh, then that's how the, yeah, this is stabilized. I don't know if you um, this equation. Like, for and, and, and it is natural because this thing goes like e to the minus, like, e to the minus so the volume. So, like so the, it, you, have, you know it has a runaway behavior. Mm -hmm. And it's good that because that means that the infinite one volume, one then you have to recover flat control. space. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, in, in, in the, you, you don't have a, a, a whole it's just yeah. runaway because you can, you can also have a, a minimum coming, yeah. out, coming out. And why do you have a minimum? Because in string theory, there are also um, each modulus is a different expansion. Because each modulus is the is a, the inverse of a gauge coupling for a different field. Yeah. So you have a D7. Yeah, from from exactly. Yeah. Yeah, for instance, you have a D7 brain wrapped in one cycle yeah. here, another D7 brain wrapped in another cycle. Yeah. So you have the expansion parameter what is, 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 the, is the size of the cycle, the inverse size of the cycle here, and the inverse size of the cycle there. So in the effective theory, you have different expansions. Okay. And then the fact that this expansion can combine with this one, each of them will give you like a runaway. But you put the two things together, at some point they, they complete. But what's the So essentially, you, you have Yeah. 
uh, if you have only one expansion, no. you cannot expect one third con. Only if the other one to be the minimum, because then, then you break your breaking the person. Because if you have two different expansions, you can be part of this one with that one to get the to get a minimum mm -hmm. And that's what it's happening. So in both cases, the hope of this goes to zero when the G's go to, to, to zero. But, so that's the runaway that we have. But then the uh, volume decay you were talking about? Sorry. On some slide, you had volume decay. Is that this? this uh, uh, no, the volume decay. The, the volume decay is is uh, is the fact that you know the, the volume decay is the fact that this guy the, the volume moves. Um, so I don't. The volume don't moves goes like the, the mass. So the volume goes like one of the volume. So it's I mean, what she's doing might mm -hmm. work for this for conformal, but if you go to this formal. Mm -hmm. um, but even for formal case, the the sum of the of the of the, the soft masses, not like one of volume squared. So that's the idea. The like gradient, not like one of squared. So the, uh, this is heavier than this one. So 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 the volume. So, like, like, uh, so, so the, the volume will be oscillating around its minimums uh, and control the energy density of the universe. So at some point, when it is start with uh, here, here it is the case. And the case to the slide, yes. and that's that's what we call it. So, but it will not be after the inflation, but after the volume of the second. And that's how you think about it. The minimum is just to generate the volume in this way. And, uh, which is, that's very important. There was a, a problem in the 80s, one of the so called uh, uh, Lion Cyber Codes. Lion Cyber Code, the, oh, the, the, the model end, you have to have you know, 2 0 and infinity. And then, uh, then and so at some point, I don't know, I was here, it was there. And um, they said, well, whatever, if it goes in this way, whatever is our lesson has to, has to be uh, a perturbative like this. And I don't know, all the expansions are that you are completing different in orders of the I mean, one perturbative expansion is completing the choice of the media people. So that means that the solution of the network is going to be so good. But in this case, but don't assume that you have only one field. Yeah. If you have several, then the two different expansions compete with each other, and you can have weaker things both. That's what that's not good. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember what the uh, so space-time interpretation is. Uh, these are instant these are, these are these are Yes, instant and custodian instance. standard custodian instance. But they can, come from rounds in seven, before the rounds in seven. Oh. Yeah, yes, there are two ways to get it. We brought the seven to the first cycle, the seven is going to be the general position. That would be the seven. 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 Then you can also have Euclidean different breaks. And the Euclidean different breaks grab the whole cycle. And that's it. Because then you don't have anything extra. And that's what I mean. That's the reason. And then it goes like equal to the minus. So whenever both are present, this dominates. But it could be that this is present, this is not. So, so this is standard instant. Standard instant of the reflected effect that you have the uh, instructor is a bit three brain program. So. And what is it that you gain from a strongly coupled to Uh, yes, so far you don't get that much because uh, you don't control the technical theory. But uh, the reason they were pushing for it, which I think is the principle is more general, because a theory, uh, you can go to the limit and, and get to type 2 as what well, as I said. But then you can, you know, you can go to gains, stay in the stroke of the limit and it's effective here. Uh, but it is, what new can you get? You can get. Uh, um, in value defined models. That we do not get product of SU1, product of SU1, SU1, SU2, SU3, or SU4, or so, but you can get E6. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas in, in, in FU, you can get E6, you can get SO10 with the joints and so on. So, in that sense, it's closer to what we thought in the past that the value defined model was. And it's so well, that I sense is so much. I don't care what's been happening. <laughs> right. So, so in that sense, uh, uh, what I have to say, 
they made too many claims at that time that uh, were not very well justified. And when people have been sitting down to revise, most of the equipment has disappeared. But now they are making progress more in the formal way, in the mathematical way. Yes, so, so in that sense, which I think is very nice. So, so and, and still the motivation is there. And the question is that uh, what they claim they have done is an, is an interesting open question to, to uh, actually do it. <laughs> Not always the case. Yes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, he's very creative, so, but he jumped, he jumped too far. Just, yeah, no, yes, yeah. And, and then people are. Well, he's very. Uh, called optimistic. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. Though, that I remember his first talk on activity was so exciting. But like, he was approximating something in the exponential, plus or minus something, but if, you, know, if you change the exponential from plus or minus two, you can change the whole picture. And then uh, he, he was making everything that to work. And, but then uh, I think, I mean, that was the same group, this was more community. There were some gross features that would still be. Yeah. I mean, there were interpretations, yeah. like, geometrical interpretations of what seemed like contrived yes, models. Right? Yes, I think it was nice. Yeah. And, and so I think people are cleaning that. Well, I mean, it takes several years. And, and, uh, and uh, he, I mean, interesting things he will he he still uh, let go. Uh, I, I used to joke, uh, joke uh, to give the summary talk last year in the, in the conference in Madrid in the morning. So I said that. Uh, you know, the comparison between type 2B models and heterotic. You know, heterotic are better for model building, but not very good for model stabilization. Whereas type 2B, they are very good for model stabilization, but uh, model building is still not quite uh, done. And the good thing about that theory is that it shares the problems of the two. Shares the problems. <laughs> <laughs> that's so so that, that's the motivation of the, <laughs> that's the, motivation of the theory. But, uh, but I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, I had a, for, from a phenomenological point of view, you said something a little bit different, but I want to make sure I don't forget it. You said something about how it's a shame that Susie missed the opportunity to uh, solve the cosmological constant problem. And I don't understand that from a phenomenological point of view at all. Why would you expect something that's supposed to solve a gauge hierarchy problem? Wouldn't it be shocking if something that solved the gauge hierarchy problem, from the, from the Juno point of view, also solved the gravitational problem? But I would say the other way around. Which problem is bigger? Because why are you not things? Well, as a string theorist, I would say it's the same thing, right? But <laughs> that's from a Juno <laughs> point of view, they're completely different. So why would? Yes, exactly. But I mean, I would say this supersymmetry had all the potential to solve the Galois constant problem. So. It, it, if I were supersymmetry, I would solve that problem. <laughs> you know. Well, because of, because of what? String theory? No, because it's, it's a bigger problem. You know, the, 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 the tuning is, huge, is bigger, the, 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 the divergences are quartic. Oh, uh, I understand, but it's, so, I mean, it's a problem that so arises a, in a theory that uh, it's a problem that has nothing to do with gravity. <laughs> yeah, it's a theory with gravity, so then you have supergravity. But so, so, so in some sense, you have supersymmetry, can cancel the, the loops to solve the cosmological constant also no problem. Something. Ah, I see what you mean. Okay. And, uh, and yet he didn't do it. Okay. Sure. So now, we have, uh, okay, forget about that, and let's cancel this little thing, which is not that big. Yeah. Uh, so he said it needs a chance. Yeah. And uh, now, since it needs a chance, you can miss the second. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's the. Yeah. So you're basically saying, from a quantum proof theory point of view, there's really not much of a difference between yes, cosmological constant and Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so it's, it's a big miss for supersymmetry. So, in that sense, uh, that, that was, for me, always the weakest point about supersymmetry because uh, also if, if you forget about just like, whatever something because only a constant problem can affect you, the, the, the direct problem of that supersymmetry may not turn out. What about supersymmetry? Should have. Like, if, it is, if, it, if it is symmetry that uh, addresses your problems, the best thing in the world. Yeah, but I mean, from another point of view, you could say that it's cosmological constant in terms of gravitational problems. So, for example, relaxing in a, from the, it could relax in a sitter, to like a Poincaré uh, effect idea, or I don't think it's the exact idea. Uh, but the idea that it, that the that the cosmological constant uh, decays over time in a sitter universe. Yeah. So that would be a complete. That would be the, the solution for that one. It completely, it's not a symmetry. Statement. It's not a symmetry. Yeah, but I mean, you have to explain 
why I mean, at that time I mean, imagine uh, well up to 1998 we wanted to say why it was zero yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was a big thing and, just, uh, and it's zero that you have the symmetry the symmetry is, uh, and if it is no zero now the uh, y was box all these things don't, don't explain why it's so small yeah. and uh, super symmetry could have uh, protected that So I don't like the landscape. I have to say the landscape solution, but uh, is the best thing we have. I may be the right solution. Uh, that's basically another. You, you're, you're talking about ruling out string theory, and I, I really thought you were going to say you should think of string theory as a calculus, and I'm building a model inside of string theory. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so you're not good. ruling anything. You're just you're, you're ruling on your model. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's what I say. Yeah, we cannot rule out string theory, but you can rule out scenarios. Yeah, string theory. I, I just wonder whether there's even a point of talking about ruling out string theory. It's like, well, uh, 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 <laughs> isn't, isn't, it a, isn't it a calculus for weakly coupled gravity and quantum field theory together? Uh, right, but uh, let me see. Let me try this. Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is something I, 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 I think I can go with. Uh, so. Uh, it's, it's only because it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you have in special relativity, you have this uh, thinking approach to define what a particle is. Uh, all the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the representation. The hierarchy problem, after all, is relatively recent phenomenon. Is that right? Exactly. Due to LAC so, situation. Yes, uh, it was already hinted at left, but now mm -hmm. it's getting worse. Getting worse. Are these scenarios in the practices, are they recent scenarios? Yes. Because of this? Yes. Yeah. This, this, this was motivated because of the landscape. So the landscape gives you the solution of mm -hmm. the hierarchy of the cosmology constant problem. Why don't we use this to solve the, also the hierarchy problem? And then they say, well, the, let's keep the, some good things about the supersymmetry, which was, for instance, the gauge coupling unification. So if we keep the gauge coupling unification, you need the genus to be light, but you don't need to be the squarks to be light. So in that sense, uh, you can split the two and still have, and then the genus can be as the dark matter and so on. So you keep the good things about the symmetry except for the hierarchy. And the hierarchy you just the balance. And here, of course, the hierarchy is for symmetry, so everything is solved by the balance. So can you say that again? Why would the hierarchy problem not be solved as a symmetry? Oh, yes, because, uh, yes, in <coughs> because uh, you, you still don't have, if, if the scalars are more scalar than the genus, mm -hmm. so everything is done. So super simple is not protected the scalars, the scalar masses. Mm -hmm. But the genus can be TeV, but the scalars can be 1,000 TeV, so, or 10 to the 10 TeV. So, so the super simple is not protecting the scalar masses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will revisit the antithetical brain of Philip. And I will skip some of the slides. But the, the idea is the following. So I told you that you had a, a Calabria, which is very complicated uh, topology. And then you have here an anti-brain. And the anti-brain, because of this uh, warping, the anti-brain, you can, uh, uh, the warping, remember, that depends on the heat of the decay over N. So you have this redshift from going to here to here. And uh, that, that, that means that the, you, you can tune that, the, or, or or use this warping to, to, to whatever cosmological constant you have, this can be uh, adjusted by adjusting the situation in the years so that you have very small crystal. And uh, adding that the brain here, I told you, was breaking some of the in my hand. So now there's a, a, a new way to describe this, which I am not going to describe to you. And, uh, and, uh, how much time do I have? 20 minutes or so. So I will skip some of the slides. Yes. The new way is something that people have been working with the past couple of years. It comes into the play of this new button superfields. So in supersymmetry, usually we have the particles, the matter particles come into the kinder multiples with the scalar component. The fermion and then the field. That's already satisfies the constraint that defines the chaos of the field. But uh, you impose as an extra constraint that this field is, superfield is uh, nilpotent 
like square equal to zero, then some of these components are related to each other. So the, the scalar component is related to the to the type psi over there. And uh, so that means that now it's not an independent field, no, it's, it's a composite set. And it's, it's also this equation makes sense whenever only if f is different to zero. So it's yeah, and f is different to zero in supersymmetric growth. So when you consider the simplest scalar potentials for potential and plug them the scalar potential, it turns out that the scalar potential has a contribution which is just positive that uh, proportional to the set. So potential is too linear in x because x squared is zero. So it's proportional to a coefficient of and that's precisely the F term of the And uh, so it is a nice way to see that it contributes to only one term in the scalar potential, and uh, it is positive definitely. So that's precisely what it does what you want to do, leap, leap from the address to the positive And uh, when you write in components, it gives you the, stand, the famous work of Arturo, which is one of the first uh, papers on supersymmetry in the 1970s, which is uh, uh, what is called nonlinearly realized supersymmetry. So just using this important superfield, you get uh, something that precisely what you want. And, uh, and actually, you can incorporate it in the, to the, the stringy part. You have the flux of the potential, the minus of the potential, the number two of this, then you add this extra in your case of this with x. You as added the field x as an extra component in your, your screen. Model. And then what, what is it that you get? You get a term which is precisely the oblique term that people were getting this KKLD were getting to, from the anti -brain. So the claim here is that a way to represent the presence of the anti -brain in your practical theory is by introducing a chiral superfield, which is the problem. So this achieves something that we didn't know before, we didn't do it before, is that uh, you can do it in a fully supersymmetric action. You can have the, you can describe the physics of the anti -brain. That, that, that's the problem, as I would say, because then, then you have control, because now uh, you have to only deal with the potential, get potential, and precisely any cost of one supersymmetric action, and no, no break supersymmetry like that. Right? And then, as we had a uh, Carlos and Uraga, we had an explicit example where you have complete Calabillao, and then we found put an anti brain, and found for the spectrum of the anti brain, and the only minor field in the anti brain was the constima, that this company has. Uh, the organic part, the component of X. And because you know, they can be represented by X, and S would be X. So this is an extreme representation of the idea of the importance of the And this, so that shows you that precisely the, the, the standard brain can be described as the importance of the and, and how do you break the symmetry then? Precisely like that. So this, this is the way of breaking the symmetry. Sorry, how? So you're saying the effective theory? You have an effective theory? Yes. Where all the matter fields, all the matter fields, and the model and so, and then you add this field x in the kinetic potential and the super potential. So you still have to turn on fluxes, etc. No, you have all the fluxes. You, you have, have to do that. You so have everything else. But then it's breaking. And on top of that, yeah. yes, uh, this is even for KKLT. Remember that KKLT was everything super special. So you do this, <coughs> and on top of that, add, add uh, the, the x field. Now the x field breaks the potential. So you can compute f term, and it's the it's, it's important. So in that sense, it's a, just, you start with a fully supersymmetric Lagrangian and just break supersymmetry. Just that way. Uh, well, and you can do it uh, explicitly in compact Calabellados and so on. So that's the difference. Yeah. So in sense, you have a complete Calabellado, but you can actually do that in the brain and the, the warping and so on. So, and, uh, yes. I will skip this, this thing. So if you want to ask me a question like, uh, about the, the thing that I'm skipping is that you can have interaction between my brain and the brain, like a full of interaction, and you can describe it also in terms of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's see, let's talk about supersymmetry breaking. Supersymmetry so breaking in general, you start, people discussed that in the 90s. Uh, you have uh, minor fields and moduli, and what you are interested in is how uh, the supersymmetry broken in the matter fields, and the, the fields that break supersymmetry are the model of the set. And uh, once they break supersymmetry, you, they will induce the supersymmetric, uh, non supersymmetric like as the so supersymmetry breaking like Lagrangian, which will have mass terms for the scalars, mass terms for the gegenos, and trading a complex, A in band and in zero. And then you can compute the three quantities in terms of the f terms and, and the arbitrary functions 
of the of the other case. So this this is not completely incomplete in error. But this could not be done in the case of the anti-brain before because anti-brain was not supersymmetric. Now we can do it because we have everything supersymmetric with the X brain. And that's what the And uh, so to store the supersymmetry brain, you have to consider the two scenarios. One is that the standard model is on a D3 brain at the similarity, or the standard model is on a D7 brain at the opposite. Those are the only two options. And in those then you have two different physical results. In the original KKKD, people try to uh, maybe try to compute the soft terms by having the anti brains in a non supersymmetric way. And they computed the mass of the, of the, of the volume models compared to the gravitino, which is heavier, and the gravitino was heavier than all the masses like the genus and the scalar the comparison of the first electrons. But now we need it using the hypothesis of the field, and we have uh, using the general formulas, and we have a specific expression for the masses of the, the genus and the mass of the scalars. And something that is interesting to see the mass of the scalars is proportional to the gravitino mass. And the mass of the genus, the gravitino mass, divided by a quantity which is a form of n plank over n gravitino. So that means this is smaller than the gravitino mass. So this is complete the realization of the split supersymmetry that I was telling you. And that's for KKT, and you do the similar thing for the life volume. And I won't go into the test, I will just summarize here. So then we come up with four scenarios. Now KKT and large volume. The standard model can be a D3 or the seven brains. So those are the four combinations. And uh, in each case, you can see, for instance, uh, here in D3, the mass of the genus and the mass of the scalars, the different powers of the volume here. So this is smaller than this by a factor of uh, 50 or so. You can talk about it. Here, the similar thing. Here, the power of the volume. Here, the power of the volume, but this is squared. So then actually this is suppressed only by a volume to one half. So the ratio of these two is a volume to the one half. And then the volume is 10 to the five, 10 to the six. Then you have, a, and again, a split supersymmetry. So these two cases give you a split supersymmetry of different, one is a factor of 40 or so, and one of a factor of 1,000 or so. Well, for these sevens, here again, you get the split supersymmetry, but this is a order of one, and this has a suppression of one of the volume. And here, they are all, all of the same order. But in this case, the volume models is lacquer than all of them. And that creates this discosmological problem. So this has to be very heavy. So they are of the same order, but very heavy. So what is it that we get? We get the ugly things I told you before. Split supersymmetry and large scale. Large scale, scale, scale. <coughs> so essentially, this is a really, it's something that not, people put in we were just playing with that, with that in the past, and now you can derive it. Those are the only scenarios you get. You don't get the nice scenario where everybody, this, all, this, all the soft terms are the same order, and all of them are small. Either they are split, or all of them very big. So, so the nice scenario that we all like it doesn't come up here. Since I'm short of time, I will skip the inflation part, and if someone wants to tell me questions, I can, I can answer them. So your conclusion was you do not get the desired soft breaking terms? You do yes, we do not get the soft breaking terms that we desired, we wanted before. We get the ugly ones. We get the split supersymmetry or high risk supersymmetry. Uh -huh. But those are the ones I thought now with yes, days that are... Exactly. That's, 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 the, okay. that's the message. Okay. So that then, they are ugly compared to our wish, but they fit better with this program. I see. And so, and since we derive them, now I don't see them that obvious in the sense that uh, it, it is a framework where everything is, is, is derived and you can complete. So. so let me just probably uh, conclude and then if you have questions uh, here. So as I told you, you have two scenarios. Out, out of those four, again, the split supersymmetry of higher supersymmetry where the, the genus can be of a TV scale, but the scalar particles can be thousands or 50 times of that. Or both of them to be very, very large, 10 to 11 G. So, in none of the cases, super simply solve the character. So, but what I wanted to emphasize is that 
So as I said before, this is complete realization of a split supersymmetry in this case. In the framework, well, in, in, in the last case, in the path, people just say, oh, let's assume the supersymmetry, you have a split supersymmetry, and there's something like a landscape to solve the, 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 the chaotic problem. But they didn't have a landscape. Now we have a, a set of a class of models where you have the landscape that uh, solves the hierarchy cosmic constant problem. This same landscape can address the hierarchy problem and yet give us split supersymmetry. So it's, it's a concrete realization of that. More, moreover, people were talking about split supersymmetry, but they didn't know how split it was. It could have been uh, like a genus TV and the scalars can be 10 to 11 or 10 to 14 GV. That was the original proposal, actually. Whereas here, we have almost what people call mini split. It's all a small difference, it's 50 or 100 uh, factor. And, uh, and uh, that's precisely what experiment is, is preparing. Because when people propose a split SUSI, they have not discovered the Higgs. Now you put the value of the Higgs mass here, and you can have a split supersymmetry. Uh, Say so that the, this is the mass of the scalars. This is the mass of the scalars, and this is the mass of the Higgs. Now the mass of the Higgs is here, and the split supersymmetry goes between here and here, which is, uh, say, 10 uh, to the 2, 10 to the, 10 to the, 10 to, sorry, 10 to the 4 GeV, which is the 10 GeV, up to here, which is the 10 to the 5 GeV, 10 to the 3 GeV. So these are the, 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 the range, the range that is preferred by experiment. And that's, uh, that's precisely the range that we had. One, one smaller than one is bigger. And then there's the similar plot for, for large scale supersymmetry, and then for that you, you, you can hit 10 to 11, 10 to the 12, which is beside what we have. So in some sense, uh, there's a top down approach, but it's fitting with the preferred value from the experiment. By the way, what's the recognition restriction on tangent beta nowadays? Uh, it's relatively small. That's a, I think it's a, to get all the scales as tangent beta. You can plus on tangent beta 1 to up to 50, and the best one is 50 is around 2. So the experiment puts restriction. No, no, no. No? no, no. The experiment gives you build all this and tells you, for instance, all this region is, is allowed. So the, this line here is when you have gauge copy unification. So to the, to the left is gauge copy unification. So you can have gauge copy unification here. And then, right? So and, and all this experiment can tell you that. But for our uh, scenario, you get you hit here. And then you can read and understand the data. But the experiment can be compared between 50 and so on. The other uh, picture you get is something that touches with the case of the paper we have with it. Pascal is that uh, here you have a non-standard cosmology after inflation. From inflation, you have the size of inflation. But after inflation, what happens? After inflation, we have this field, which is the volume, start oscillating around its minimum, so it dominates the energy density of the universe. So in a standard cosmology, people assume that after inflation, everything is thermalized after reheating, and then you have everything thermal here, and, and then you have radiation dominated. Here you have after inflation, is this field oscillating around its minimum that dominates the energy density. And that's variables like matter, not like radiation. And, and so the real reheating happens when this field is the case. And it happens to be very, very much uh, cubic. The reheating temperature can be a few of quantity years old. And uh, <coughs> so that's a real reheating. So I mean the, the history of the universe after inflation has changed. And then, for instance, issues about dark matter are maybe you know, to recalculate that how things do. And that's what, what we did with, with the Bhaskar is that what people call the non-thermal dark matter. And, uh, and then there you can constraints that can be tested in future experiments for searching dark matter. So that's what is yeah, still some constraints from the different searches. It allows us the exceedance to be the lightest of the of the of the neutralinos. Uh, so still between 3 and 300 still allowed. And in the future, sorry, the plot doesn't look like yeah. And in the future, it can be ruled out either by, by the new generation of dark matter researchers, like something called LZ and the CPA, and even Frank, and uh, they can try to test. And, uh, and for colliders, I didn't say, for colliders, uh, since uh, the Gaginos are of a total PV and all the other ones will be very heavy, 
So that LEC you will not see any of those. If you see the stop at the LEC, you rule out all the scenarios. Because the squash will not be that light. But, uh, so the only thing we expect to see would be I guess Pixinos or uh, Winos or something like that. Else. So it's very, very, it's very small hope to see something like that. Let's see if this is correct. Uh, but it would be only the, 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 the lightness of this particle. And the, and the scalar component would not be seen. OK, so let me conclude. Um, so there are two general scenarios for super symmetry breaking with computable soft terms. And everything in terms of the fully supersymmetric effect of the theory because of this important the field picture. And uh, then the, we have, uh, well, because I'll, I'll D7 or D3, and I'll just, uh, at the end I will give you uh, what's called split supersymmetry or mini split supersymmetry. And at the end we have some thermal environments as a, as a, as a, as a positive place where it's called. And uh, so this interesting and testable phenomenology. So that's, uh, and uh, as I emphasize that these are not just two random models, these are the, the state of the art, these are the only concrete models that people are, have ever known uh, computed to fix the model. So, uh, the, of course, we cannot hope to rule out the string theory, but you can rule out concrete uh, scenarios or general scenarios of this, the, of the scope of this, these two scenarios. Of this so, and unfortunately, I didn't have the time to say it about inflation and post inflation. So, you have to be personal.